hello students and welcome back to our youtube channel guys today we are going to dive into the fascinating world of plato one of the most influential philosophers in history we will explore his life his key theories and some of his most famous works so let's get started guys first of all students we are going to talk about plato's life plato was born in athens greece around 427 or 428 BC. He came from wealthy and aristocratic family and his real name was Aristocles. However, guys, he was later given the nickname Plato, which means broad in Greek, like because of his broad shoulders. Remember, guys, growing up in Athens, Plato witnessed the political turmoil and the execution of his mentor or you can say teacher, Socrates and which greatly influenced his philosophical journey. Now we are going to talk about Plato's theory. Guys, Plato had many groundbreaking theories, but one of his most famous is the allegory of cave. In this allegory, he described a world where people are prisoners in a cave, seeing only shadow on the wall. These shadow represent our limited understanding of reality. Guys, Plato believed that True knowledge comes from the world of forms and a perfect realm of abstract ideas. The physical world is just an incorrect reflection of these perfect forms. Another significant work of Plato is The Republic. In this book, he explored the idea of an ideal society led by philosopher kings. He believed, guys, that philosopher kings with their wisdom and virtues govern or you can say make a harmonious society. So remember this thing guys. Or one more thing, Plato wrote so many dialogues, many do, uh, you can say many dialogues talking about his teacher Socrates as a central character. Remember, some of his other famous works include Phaedrus, Phaedo and Symposium, which delve into the topics like love, the soul and the nature of reality. Guys, Plato also established the academy. The academy is the one of his, uh, you know, first known institution of his higher learning in the Western world. It was a place where students engaged in deep philosophical discussions and mathematics. Now, students, I am going to tell you certain extra things related to Plato concepts on theory. Remember, don't forget that Plato is sometimes counted as the first feminist. Because in Republic chapter 5, he talks about the life of a man and a woman. And he simply compares a woman to a dog. He says that as even a female dog has certain responsibility, if she cannot go for hunting like the male dog, she takes care of the puppies. This is how a woman also takes care of the home affairs or you can say household affairs. So woman is equally participating in the task which is you know, shared by male, just like male goes for hunting. Now, question comes that uh, what women does? So, she is working in household. She prepares the food. She arranges the family and everything. So, he says that women must be respected. Now, the first thing is that Plato is someone who says that women should be given respect because woman is equally participating the whole task of the you know family and is supporting husband or the male counterpart so that uh, they are in a way that they exist and they have their own sharing so this is what you have to remember because if uh, they ask you the question uh, in the exam that which of these writer or which of these books can be picked up as one of the first texts or uh, you know, writer dealing with feminism. So Plato's Republic chapter 5 deals with feminism. Now the next thing is, as I told you, that he said poetry should be banned from ideal republic. That poetry is twice or thrice removed from reality. That is not the only reason. Now let's take an example. A poet is inspired by the worldly beauty or beautiful mountain like right okay for example he is inspired by a beautiful mountain and that beautiful mountain was created by god that means it is a copy right 
so the mountain which is already a copy and it has an image in god's mind so you can say the copied image is again a copy and then he writes a poetry on the mountain which is the second copy and when it reaches to the critic he attempts his own ideologies and uh, put his own you know perspective and uh, applies his own mindset that makes it third copy so poetry sometimes become thrice removed from reality and sometimes it become twice removed from reality now plato says that poetry is effeminate in nature that means it is feminine that means poetry makes you weak poetry makes you emotional and that is the reason he says that poetry should be banned from ideal republic he says that this is the time where the youngsters the youth they are supposed to be strong and tough but if we ask them to read poetry if we ask them you know go through lyric songs and other kinds of songs the you know the feminine quality of poetry will make their hearts feeble and they will eventually become weak now second thing is plato says that poetry is mother of lies he says that poets are always in dreaming and they have lots of daydreams they talk about uh, you know future they talk about a better life but they never ask us or they never vote for it remember guys plato was an idealist and he was of the view that instead of talking about a beautiful life one should start working for it he simply says that poets make us visualize dreamy things poet make us fall in dreams poet take us far away from the reality of the world and it simply diverts our attention from the exact reality so he simply says that poetry should be banned because it is the mother of lies it does lots of fake promises then second thing he says that poetry has a moral nature but it does not give a good message so here you have to remember this thing that uh, this is the time of plato so there were no poets like shakespeare milton or you can say john donne or t s eliot so at plato's time only tragic poetry was accepted so the plato says that poetry gives you a wrong message or you can say immoral message now question comes that how poetry gives you wrong message now remember students you are you know watching me suppose what uh, if you watch a movie or you read a poetry where hero is suffering you know because he is a good man what will you do suppose you watch the movie and the hero is a victim he has been a victim because of his good uh, conduct or you can say good deeds so it is you know tragedy theek hai obviously a tragedy simply means that something is bad happening in the life of a good man so what will you get a message you will feel pain you feel bad for the hero now suppose i make you watch hundreds of movie where good men are suffering tragic poetry or tragic movies or tragic drama or make you watch all these things again and again gradually you will change your mindset and you will start telling others that being good is not good for you so in short the modern age is not for good men or uh, you know nobody accept goodness why do you say so because we have seen lots of tragedies so plato says that poets are talking about tragedy showing the tragedy of a good man that eventually gives message that being good is not good for you and you will be a victim then the next thing we have is that plato simply says that poetry invoke emotions and it makes you weak here he says that poetry is feminine it simply touches the heart and invokes momentary emotion momentary emotion is means for example when you go to watch a movie like uh, border or loc you come back planning to join army uh, like uh, it is like one or two days for uh, one or two days you are army officer then you go to watch another movie dealing with cricket and one two days you are in emotion to be a someone else so he says that poetry invokes momentary emotions and momentary emotions cannot be trusted so these are certain reasons 
that he says poetry should be banned from the ideal republic now here guys i tell you something very very important we all know that plato banned poets from ideal republic we all know that plato was an idealist we all know that plato has written books like dialogues and republic but you know remember this thing there are two types of poet that plato has accepted and is agreed he is happy with the concept that two types of poet can be accepted so he accepted only two types of poet the first type is the first type is one who the poets who are celebrating famous people means the man those who are doing good the people those are doing good in respective lives the people those who are doing good for society the people those who are doing good for others so according to plato's opinion the two types of poets are who, who are accepted first one is man who praises others like the good people so the man who writes panegyric uh, if we talk about panegyric panegyric is the praising poem when you praise others second is hymns to god hymns to god means they worships so two types of poets are accepted those who write pen greek uh, to famous man and hymns to god and remember it is line by plato pen greek to famous man and hymns to god so remember this thing if we they ask you a question in net exam you have to remember the pen greek writers and hymn writers they are simply accepted by the plato so remember students they do not ask a lot of question from criticism in net exam so no need to go in the depth of each and every topic so in short guys plato was a brilliant philosopher whose ideas on reality knowledge and the ideal state continue to influence our world today his works was essential reading for anyone interested in philosophy and his impact on western thought is worldwide so that's it for today's lecture guys thank you for joining us on this journey through the life theories and works of plato so guys if you enjoyed this video please don't forget to like subscribe and remember hit that notification bell for more thoughts provoking content see you in the next video guys